Giving has never been easier at Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Grant Hill offers several options for you to give your tithes and offerings. You can donate with your credit or debit card, your PayPal account, Cash App. You can mail in your donation or drop off your donation in our secure Dropbox. Just visit our website at granthillbaptist.org and click on the Donate button. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete your transaction. If you would like to donate using Cash App, open the Cash App on your mobile device. Enter the cash tag, Grant Hill Baptist, as shown here. Type in a note in the For field, such as tithes or another reason for your donation. Then tap Pay. You can also donate by mailing your donations to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 5405 Black River Road, Rembert, South Carolina, 29128. Please do not send cash through the mail. Please know that we deeply appreciate your kindness and generosity in giving to our ministry here at Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church. We continue to honor, praise, and lift the name of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Be blessed.
Monday, the uh, second of November, which is uh, the second Sunday in November, and we want to bless God for the opportunity of bringing us together. We hope and pray that we all are doing good. Those that we have not heard from recently, we pray that you all are doing pretty fine. Today's lesson, we're going to be talking about being thankful. And our theme is thankfulness for this quarter. So before we jump into the lesson, let us uh, look to the Lord in prayer, ask His blessing and guidance as we discuss and learn something new about being thankful. Let us pray. Our Lord and Master, we want to bless you today for your kindness, for your love, for your mercies, for your protection, for just providing for us every step of the way. Some days it looks gloomy, some days we feel down, some days we're disappointed. All other things happen, Lord, but at the end of the day, we're still here. You still got our back. So we just want to tell you thank you. We want to be thankful to you. As we learn about more about being thankful to you, we ask that you guide this lesson. Uh, speak to our hearts, that we speak to your people, and they may understand you more. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Being thankful. Our scripture lessons come from 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Ephesians 5.20, Colossians 3.15-17. And our key verse for today is, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's from 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. And so our first question, or essential question today is, if, if it's okay, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, shouldn't it also be yours? If it's God's will, shouldn't it also be our will? To give thanks or to be thankful. So let's see how we can answer that question or how we can understand why that question came about. So by the time we get through this lesson, it is our prayer that we will understand that nothing in life just happens. We realize that giving thanks to God is His will when it concerns you. We also will understand that know that we should give thanks unto God for the little things as well as the big things. Yes, yeah, some of us say all the time that, well, this is just a little thing, or just my will, or just me, I just got it. We feel to realize that you know, that's just through our will and our power that we got that little thing. And we will understand that we should give thanks to you for every single thing we do, we earn, we use, we appreciate, we understand, whatever it is, we should give thanks to him. So, the belief that your hard work or our hard work, uh, you know, will get us a certain point in life, take us to a certain place in life all the time. It is just a belief, okay? The fact that we think that our hard work will take us to a certain place in life, it is our belief. We do nothing in life, I must say again, we do nothing in this life without the blessing of God. And you will say, well, Brother Charles, how about those who are non Christians? Yeah. We understand that. But remember how much God loves his children. He has already given us a blessing. He already allows us to do a lot of things. We learned about the will of God in our lives some time ago. But everything we do in life does not happen without the will of God. You may think it is your knowledge. It is your smartness. It is whatever you think. It is your connection, your business talk, your political talk, your whatever talk it is, whatever you think you do. You think it is that that got you through what to accomplish that? No. Something happened in the invisible that you do not know. And that thing that happened is God's will. So let us understand that all that is required of us is to serve Him and give Him thanks for our blessings. That's the only thing that's required. Every time He blesses us, we should be mindful to stop to give thanks. But we, we know that all of us have uh, always tried to give God the second place, the second thanks in our lives. You know, we do everything else. Whew, I did it today. I made the grades. I made manager. Whew, I did that. I did this. I did the other. Then sometimes we don't even say, oh, thank God. We just forget about it. Then two days later, well, thank God I made it through this week. 
Really? <laughs> when it happened, you wouldn't praise yourself. And you didn't even think about God at the moment. You were only claiming, only, you know, sounding off that you did this, you did that. Oh, you know, I was so smart. I did X, Y, Z. But let us start to think that we must be thankful. The voice tells us that we must give thanks to God in everything in his, his will. That we give thanks to him because there is nothing we do here without his blessing. There is nothing, in, in other words, is that there is nothing we do without his permission or without his consent or that he's not aware of. Even if it is bad at a certain time, not that he won't allow you to do the bad thing, but sometimes some of the things we do that are bad help us to come around to understand the, the blessings of God because the bad things you do come back to haunt you. If you lie, you steal, whatever it is, it comes back to haunt you. Then you realize that, oh, I shall not done that. I shall ask God. I shall suck the face of the Lord. So, let us continue. Once you know God for yourself and study his word, only then you can truly appreciate how much you need to make it a serious concern. I don't know how to emphasize the word, but you need to make it very critical and very important in your life to give God the thanks. We should give thanks to God daily from time to time, from the time we wake up in the morning until we go back to sleep at night. We should give God the thanks. Because simply, everything that got you going around here is the breath in you. The breath and this blood flowing through our veins. Without the breath, without the blood flowing, you cold, you dead. So every time you get up in the morning and see the morning, you need to give God thanks. Because you there's somebody else who did not make it through the night. And you're still here. So when you think you get up in the morning and you're all excited, you got the energy, you got the strength, everything, you can do it, stop and think, my God, I made it through to another day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because you could be God the same way like the other person. Not because the people are not better than you in the past. It maybe it was just the time, whatever it is. But those are the things you use hit our minds. Now, wow. You pick up the phone in the morning. Oh, Lord, Brother John Brown. What? Yeah, it would have been you, but you're here. So give God the blessing. Be thankful to him. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, no, 18, it says, Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray continually. Now, we're not saying everywhere you turn, you should stood down your knee, you stay in the corner. Hold on, no, 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 no. You can pray. Everything we do, just the same way you're driving, you're sitting, you walk, what we're doing, in your mind, in your, in, in your, I don't want to say your absence mind, but in your subconscious mind, you're talking about something, you're thinking about something. We all do all the time. We're thinking about our job interview. We're thinking about what we're going to cook today, how we're going to drive from east to west, and blah, blah, blah. Continually pray to God. Talk to Him. He's a spirit. He dwells within you. So you don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to go to the post office and send a letter. You don't need your phone bill to be paid for you to make a call. He's right there with you. So talk to him all the time. Appreciate him for every step you make. You don't have to stand down on your knees or stay in a special corner or go to church to say, I'm going to give God a thanks. No. Just let it flow. Just like you let your daily life flow. The daily things to think about, just let it flow. Lord, thank you for this moment. Oh, Lord, thank you. I did this with you. Thank you. You made me accomplish this today. Thank you, Lord, for it. You don't have to go to everybody, oh, how do you go, how do you go, Joe? Oh, thank God. We're not saying that. Somebody say, oh, hi, Brother Charles. Oh, hold on to your thank God. You know, that's what we're talking about. But you need to give God the thanks because we don't want you to overdo it. That's what I'm trying to say. In uh, Colossians 3, 15 to 17, we learn that let the peace of Christ rule in your heart and be thankful. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart and be thankful. And let me tell you something, friends. Once the peace of God rules in your heart, the position or the, the idea or the opportunity for anger to get into your heart is almost next to impossible because you are at peace with Christ. Anybody says something to you before you react, you will step back and think. And I always tell people, I don't get angry. And they say, how will you say that? I say, no. Let me explain to you why. One, I always make sure when I say good morning, brother, this or good morning, sister, that, and you feel insulted and you or you gave me a slap or you feel angry, I want to know how, why you got angry when I said good morning. 
So what I do, instead of going back at the wall, why is it a good morning? Why is the lash at me like this? No, step back. We have a loss of communication. The way you say something to somebody, the way it comes from your voice, from your mouth, that tune, the way they receive it and perceive it are two different transmissions right there. We have the exercise with all day in school. You give one child a message here, and he said, give that message to everybody else until you get to the principal. You will all know by the time it gets to the principal office, it is a totally different message. Tell somebody the dog is brown. Tell the other people the dog is brown. By the time you get to the principal, they will say the cow is white. So that's a simple line of communication. So Newton says, to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Why? Because when I say good morning, the way I said a good morning, it will come to you in an aggressive manner. And you will respond aggressively. That's an equal opposite reaction. So my responsibility is to step back. How did I say good morning? How did she or she understand when I said good morning? So whatever you do, if you respond negatively, be careful. So therefore, you have the peace of God in your heart. If people react to you, you don't just react. You stay calm and think about what happened. What did I do to cause that reaction? So whenever we give God the thanks, I will give him the praise. We appreciate him. His reaction is positive. He will bless us continually. So that's why it's being said here. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart and be thankful. Because once you do that, he will bless you. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom to psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Yes, we can, that's what we sing. All these nice gospel songs. And we do praise and worship. And we uplift the spirit of one another. That's why the praise team come up. Or the choir come up. And they sing these songs because we are to admonish one another. Through songs and through the psalms, reading of the scriptures. We study these scriptures to one another, encouraging one another. And at the end of the day, we all be thankful to God for his blessings, for giving us the opportunity. So let us understand that if we start allowing the peace of God to rule in our heart, many times we will not be angry. And anger have an impact on your health. Psalm 98, 1 to 6 says what? Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done a marvelous thing. Sing to the Lord, for he has done a marvelous thing. He has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nation. He has remembered his faithfulness to us. Shout for joy to the Lord. Burst into jubilant songs of music. Shout for joy before the Lord our King. You see, we tell him thanks. All the way we praise him through our songs, we sing and we shout to him. These are all attitudes of thanksgiving to God. And once we're doing these things to him, that's all he asks of us. He will bless us bountifully. He will reward us with a lot of blessing, continue to protect us, everything else. So let us understand today that being thankful is not something that you must be so uh, overburdened about. It's a simple thank you. And we all know when you go to your parents, or you go to your jobs, or you go to your husband, your wife, whoever it is, and they do something. There are two, I always call it the magic words. Please, please assist me. Please do this. After that, thank you. That brings so much peace and calm to whatever it is. Even if somebody comes to you angry with anything else, and they bring all these things I do when they finish, it's okay, thank you, brother, so, so, and so. You will see that it's a different dominion over the face, over the, the body, completely. The moment you say, thank you. I appreciate what you said. They're going to calm down right away. So that's, those are two magic words. Please and thank you. So in the please, we give God the praise. We praise him for everything. So we please him. We say, Lord, please do this. Please do that. At the end of the day, thank you, Lord. That's all he asks of us. It's it hard for us to do. But some of us, I know, I did it myself. I ran the race. I got that job. Oh yeah, I made one A plus in school. Oh, I did this. I did that. I am the this. I am the that. Stop. Give God the praise. Tell him thanks for the moment you get up, for the very breath you have, for the very step you make, for the very moment or second you blink your eye. Give God the thanks because you could be in any other condition. Let the marriage here or the John Brown who is laying in the hospital today that you know. The Cecilia or whoever John it is who just passed away in some accident, in some situation. You would have been the same person. So we need to stop and give God the thanks all the time. Let us stop. Stop running. 
get off social media, get off all the gossip lies, find one second and give God the thanks. Once you do that, he will bless you. So let us see if we can apply some of these teachings or some of these discussions to ourselves. So let me ask you, when you look back at the past week, this just this past week, can you name off the top of your head three things that you are thankful for? Just this past week, look back at this week and look at just three things that you are thankful for and give God the thanks for it. Could you also sacrifice your child to save others? That's a huge question. Could you sacrifice your child to save others? Or would you be thankful if someone sacrifices someone they love to save you? Why is that question, Brother Charles? Remember, Jesus Christ sacrificed his son, his only begotten son, to come to earth. We abuse him, we crucify him. But to come to save the same us who abuse and crucify him. So can you do the same thing that God did? So how much love is that for him to sacrifice his only begotten son? You don't even want to sacrifice your car to your friend to use for 30 minutes. And let alone sacrifice your whole child for somebody else. That is a big, big, big situation we're talking about. But God in heaven sacrifice his only son. It's not that you don't know. It is proven. He walked the face of the earth. He was crucified. He died. He resurrected. We know that for a fact. So can you point to anything you sacrificed to live for somebody? Is there anything you sacrificed for somebody? Let's forget about your child. Is there anything in the last week you sacrificed for your neighbor, for your community, for your friend, for your child, for your wife, for your husband, for your brother, for your sister? Is there anything you sacrificed today, this week? Will you be thankful if someone sacrificed someone for you? You say, well, I didn't ask them to. We always have that attitude. Something happened, and somebody asked him, well, but you didn't even tell Brother John that. But I didn't ask him to do it. He just did it on his own. Really, man? Simple. Thank you, Brother John, for doing this. Whether he just did it on his own or not, maybe God moved in him to do it for you. So can you be thankful? If someone sacrificed something just for you, someone sacrificed their time, their energy, their knowledge, their skill, whatever it is, will you be happy? Will you thank God for that person? If so, God bless you. We want to bless God today for this discussion. We hope that you go through your week successfully. And remember, give thanks to God for this is the will of God. We are taught to do that every day. Thank you and God bless.
Somebody need to tell us to press on. I'm impressed with the ministry of Paul. I'm very impressed with his ministry. 
just as well as I am impressed with many of the patriarchs that are found in the Holy Bible. I have found myself hanging out with many of the characters in the Bible throughout my life. Throughout my life. And even though I'm not that old, I'm old enough to have walked and to have gone on a journey with the Lord. I met him at a very young age and I grew up in a religious family and taught the scriptures and the laws and the principles of God from a very young age. But received the Holy Spirit at a very young age, not really even understanding the power and authority that God had given me. And throughout my life, I can tell you that there were many times that I have grieved the Holy Spirit with decisions that I've made, with things that I have said, things that I have done, places I have gone. But I thank God to be able to get into the Bible and hang out with some of the characters in the Bible and as you begin to hang out with some of the characters in the Bible, you, you will find out that God called many men and women to do his will. And he did not call them because they were perfect, but he called them because they were willing. He called them because he created them for the very purpose that he called them. Sometimes it's easier to be willing to do what God called you to do um, other than not being willing. Because when you live long enough, you will realize that whatever God has set in motion, it will come to pass. The manifestations of God will manifest itself in your life and around your life. So the prayer that he taught us and he said, the, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will will be done on earth and that is with us or without us. I'll praise the name of God. As a matter of fact, a song came out not long ago and said, God, whatever you're doing in the season, please don't do it without me. But there will come a time in our life that we will need an encouraging word to just press on. Press on. Because it depends on what you are up against. Praise the name of God. The circumstances and the situations that are taking place in your life. It will become a challenge just to move forward. Praise the name of God. And I need you to understand that sometimes you might, can, you might can't rejoice in your circumstance. But you can always rejoice in the Lord. For he controls your circumstance. And he'll fix things. And even if he don't fix the situation, he'll help you change. And that's even better. Because God is the orchestra of every perfect and wonderful gift. Whatever God does in our life, he does it for a reason. And whether we understand it or not, God always has a plan 
is greater than ourselves. I'm impressed with Paul because Paul was one that could encourage others when he was going through himself. You know, there are many people that they can only bless the Lord when everything is going good in their life. And there are other people they can only call on God when things are going bad in their life. But I find out that Paul was one that was just like myself. He grew up in the scriptures. He grew up knowing the law. But without the teaching of the Holy Spirit, he grew up bound to his culture, just like many of us grow up bound to our culture and to the religion that we grew up in, in the denomination that we grew up in. And some of us will go to the grave believing everything that we have been taught. But as you continue to live life, you will find out just like Paul, before he became Paul, his name was Saul. And Saul persecuted the church out of the knowledge that he had. And he really thought that he was doing God a favor. He really thought that he was doing the church a favor. He really thought that he was doing the right thing until he met Jesus for himself. And when Saul met Jesus for himself, and many of you know the story, a conversion came. He was converted by God, by Jesus himself. Uh, Paul was riding down the road of Damascus, and he was actually going to persecute someone. He was going to bring charges against someone. And I need you to understand the persecution of, of Paul and the church meant death. Praise the name of God. Because if you was found serving Jesus Christ, Paul, Saul, was going to make sure you paid the price. And the price was death. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, the Bible said that he was basically thrown off of the donkey that he was riding on. Praise the name. And when he looked up, and he, he wanted to know who was this. And Jesus said, it am I, the very one that you persecuted. Praise the name of God. And, and because of, of Paul was arrested by the Spirit of God. Uh, and God began to change Paul's life. He changed his name from Saul to Paul. And then he put him on a mission. The Bible said that he actually blinded Paul naturally. His eyes, he could not see. And, and then he, God reached out to a, a prophet. He reached out to a believer. And he told the believer, I'm sending a man named Paul to come to you. And I need you to lay hands on him. I need you to pray for him that he might have his sight again. Oh, when God reached out to this man, this man, he heard the name Saul. And, and, he, and he knew what Saul was all about. Saul was killing people. Saul was persecuting people. And do you really want me to go and put my life in jeopardy? To heal a man that you say needs to be healed? I've heard of him. I've heard of him. He's not taking any prisoners. Uh, uh, I believe this man, Ananias, he, he almost sounded like the church sound today. Uh, uh, no, we're not calling it Saul, but maybe we're calling it a virus. Maybe we are calling it COVID-19. Uh, maybe we are calling it the corona. Maybe we are calling it a pandemic. Well, whatever we are calling it. You mean, God, you want me to face this? Praise the name of God. 
And, and, and I need to, I gotta ask a question. I mean, because how much do we really trust God? Praise the name of God. How much do we, can we press on through this time? Uh, uh, and, and will we press on as Christians? And will we press on as believers of the word of God? Because I, I find myself in, in a place now of being betwixt and between of trying to really understand if we have been reading the word of God or do we actually study the word of God and do we actually believe the word of God. I'm, I'm looking around our society now and, 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 and I, I'm not bashing anybody but I just want to know where, where are all of these uh, uh, great pastors and great believers and, and ones that were healing everybody uh, praise the name of God and laying hands on everybody and people were being healed and, 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 and stadiums were being full up uh, praise the name of God where are they at now are, are they pressing on are they telling people to come down and, and let God heal like God can heal or, or are we hiding behind masses Praise the name of God. Believe in everything that, that, that the news say, every, every calculation that are being put out, uh, or every, every stat that's being put out. Uh, are we believing everything and are we hiding behind masses? Praise the name of God. Somebody say, well, it's just common sense. Well, it was common sense for, for Ananias to say, I'm not going anywhere, God. This man's killing people. And you want me to believe you? And I, I came by to submit to you this morning that God still wants us to believe him. People say, well, we ought to have common sense. Well, I need you to understand, common sense is not common when it comes to God. For the Bible says, and it makes it very plainly, that we ought to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. Which means God is not asking us to do anything that's not reasonable. And then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind. So I need to understand, when Christ Jesus get on the inside of your mind, praise the name of God, there's no way you're going to think like everybody else thinks. Uh, praise the name of God. You, you are going to see and understand what God is really calling for us or for you to do. This is a time for the church not to back up, but this is the time for the church to press on. Uh, praise the name of God. Wherever you are in your life right now, and, and I'm not just talking about the model and the brick and the four walls of the church. I'm talking about you. You are the church. And it's time for you to press on. And I need to tell you that uh, I, I, I know that you are going through some things that, that you have not gone through before. You, you have not gone this way before. These things have not happened before. Some of you just need encouragement to press on. Oh, praise the name of God. Uh, and, and I need you, if, if you married, uh, and you a husband, you need to encourage your wife to press on. And your wife, the wife need to encourage the husband to press on. We need to encourage our kids to press on. And the kids need to have enough word and enough God in them to even look at the mothers and fathers and, and see what we are going through and, and encourage us to press on. Praise the name of God. Because we're in places now, some of you, some of you married couples, I, I'm hearing this all the time. Now you're seeing each other all the time. You were getting along fine. <laughs> as long as you didn't have to see each other all the time. <laughs> now, now you, you, you have to learn to press on through this. Some of you, uh, you you're, you're uh, needing more patience in your life because your kids were going to school for seven hours in a day. Praise the name of God. And now they're around you all day long. Man. And you just need some more patience in your life. Uh, you, you're praying to God about for things that, that you never prayed about before. Praise the name of God. Because, because things have changed. Uh, some of you have gotten laid off or some of you have lost your job or your, 
your former income, praise the name of God. Or some of you have even seen your career seem as though it's going down the drain. But I, I came out and tell you, press on, press on. Praise the name of God. Uh, uh, some of you are, are dealing with health issues. And the health issues might have nothing to do with COVID-19. Praise the name of God. But I'm here to say, press on. Somebody say, well, Pastor, how did you know, praise the name of God, that this is what I need in my life? Because I, I know it because I see you about to throw in the towel. I, I, I see you uh, looking in other directions other than looking to the hills from which coming to your hill. Huh. Now, I, I, I see you uh, trying to put God on the shelf and, and saying that you can do it by yourself. Huh. I, I see you hearing uh, people talk and putting it in your spirit that if God was worried about us, if God cared about us, how would he let this happen to us? Huh? But I came by to tell you that, that, that God knows exactly uh, what is going on. Huh? And, and, and God looks at you and he's saying to you, it is time for you to use uh, the very wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that I have given you. Uh, and it's time for you to stand up uh, in a time like this. Uh, this is the time that the church must show itself. Huh. This is the time that Christians huh, must become the runners of the gospel. Huh. And we must run and tell the story. Huh. And we must tell the people that Jesus still lives. Huh. And, and we, must, we must tell the people that not only does he live, huh, but, but he still have all power in his hand. And, and the same power that he's been given, he has given it to us. So, and, and somebody said, well, yeah, that sounds good, but you don't really know what I'm going up against. So, I, I got a lot of things, uh, Pastor, that, that, and I don't, I don't know which way to go. Huh? Well, I need you to understand that when Paul began to write this letter to the uh, Philippian church, uh, Paul was uh, in bondage himself naturally. <laughs> Praise the name of God. And yet, he still had an encouraging word on the inside. <laughs> Why? Because Paul realized something. <laughs> See, sometimes when we look back over our life, uh, some of us forget where we really came from. Uh, especially as God began to bless us. Uh, and we know that there are uh, things that have taken place in our life uh, that, and we know as a believer God has forgiven us for the sins that, that we have uh, 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 carried out in our life uh, uh, for the sins that we have performed in our life. God has for, for, forgiven us for that but, but yet sometimes we forget ourselves uh, how far God brought us. Uh, and this was one thing that Paul did not forget because he knew it was only the grace of God. Uh, Paul was a persecutor. He was a killer. So by all means, uh, 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 whatever he has done, he could have looked at it as it should be done to him. Uh, as a matter of fact, he wrote the scripture that we must understand that whatever we sow is what we reap. Uh, and even when I began to study that scripture when I was younger, you know, and everybody used to always say that scripture in, in a negative way. You know, oh, you're going you to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. Praise the name of God. Well, I need you to understand, uh, if you sow good seed, you can reap good harvest. Uh, you don't always have to sow bad seed. Uh, and Paul realized this. That even though he sowed bad seed, uh, there was a time that he got converted and God changed his mind. God changed his spirit uh, and God changed his soul. Uh, and I need you to understand some of you are sitting in a place right now uh, that you need God to change your mind, uh, 
change your spirit uh, and change your soul. Uh, I mean, you need God to arrest you. Uh, you, uh, you need God to show up uh, and ask, what exactly are you doing? Uh, are you doing what I've called you to do? Uh, are you making your calling an election Sure, huh? because it is sure enough known huh, that I created you huh, to do what I asked you to do. Huh? And, and, and I created you, huh, hallelujah, to carry the word of God. Huh? I created, now nah, you don't have to be a pastor. Huh? You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an evangelist. Huh? You don't even have to have a title. Huh? All you have to do is be a believer of God. Huh? Accept him as your savior huh? and let him lead and guide you. Huh? Uh, hallelujah. And I need you to understand, just as soon as you get in your mind huh, that you want to do what God has called you to do, huh, there will be challenges come up against you trying to stop everything that God is telling you to do. Huh? But you must understand uh, that God has given you the ability not to quit but to press on. Oh, praise the name of God. Listen, there have been some, praise the name of God, way of thinking, if at first I don't succeed, quit. <laughs> praise the name of God. Yeah, yeah, if at first I don't succeed, quit. No, nah, but that's, that's not it. That's not it. You know the saying, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. You got to press on. You got to press on through your situation. You got to press on through your circumstance. Praise the name of God. You cannot let the trial of life stop you from winning the prize. Praise the name of God. That, that's what Paul said. He said, I press for the pride of the high calling. Uh, so you cannot let the trials of life stop you. Hallelujah. From winning the pride of a being one of God's children. You got to press on to the mark of the higher calling. And the higher calling is set in Jesus. And so you got to forget those things that so easily upset you and forget those things that make you afraid. Now, see, there, there are some things that are that's upsetting our society right now. There, there are some things that are making us afraid. Uh, uh, we are full of fear right now. Uh, and, and you've got to forget those things that are behind you because if, if, if you're not careful, you let some of the mistakes you already made some of the disappointments that you already had and some of the regrets that you already had, you will let them come up on you uh, and keep you from moving forward. Uh, but, but Paul even find himself in a natural jail, in a natural prison, and yet he can still pin and encourage someone. Uh, and I need you to understand that no matter whatever you're going through today, uh, I need you to understand that God still has you in a place uh, that you can encourage somebody else. Uh, as a matter of fact, just go ahead and encourage somebody right now. Uh, go ahead and chime in right now. Go ahead and hit the chat right now. Tell, tell somebody you're going to be blessed. Uh, tell somebody God got this. Uh, tell somebody press on. Uh, Tell somebody, press on right now. Huh? Go ahead and fill it up now. Let them know that God has your back. Oh, praise the name of God. Huh? How could Paul be able to do this in a situation like he was in? Paul was not just writing. Paul believed what he was writing. Paul was inspired by the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I need you to understand that where you are today, some of you know 
that you should have given up a long time ago. Uh, but look back over your life and look what God brought you through. Uh, and God brought you through some things uh, that you didn't know how you was going to come out and how you was going to make it. Uh, but if you really look back uh, and, and didn't God amaze you, uh, you was trying to get things in order. You was trying to set things up, huh, even, and you knew that you didn't have all your stuff together. Huh, and you were trying to figure out how you was going to get your ducks in a row. Huh, and God had already straightened it out. Huh. God will make a crooked path straight. Oh, praise the name of God. Huh. God will bring down mountains in your life huh, that you can walk over. Huh. Hallelujah. And God will make a way out of no way. That's what he can do. He can speak it into existence. And a matter of fact, God has given us the same power. He said life and death is within the power of the tongue. You got the power to call those things that be not. As although they already are. The same power that he gave the father of faith, Abraham. He said, listen, I need you to go to the land that I show you. Uh, and I need you to trust me enough uh, to follow my voice. Uh, and I came by to tell you the church, uh, hallelujah, you are the church. Uh, and we need to continue to follow the voice of God. Uh, and God is telling us, uh, don't you give up. Uh, God is telling you, uh, hallelujah, even though you are having problems in your family, uh, God said, I'll fix the problem. Huh? You might need to pray a little bit more. Huh? You might need to fast a little bit more. Huh? You might need to study a little bit more. Huh? Pray in the name of God. Huh? Stop asking God huh, to change everything around you. Huh? Sometimes God just needs to change you. Huh? Pray in the name of God. I found out that sometimes huh, we can be our biggest problem. Huh? We can be our worst enemy. Oh, praise the name of God. I need God to save me from myself. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How can you press on? Hallelujah. Well, I'm saying if this guy is in prison and telling us, hallelujah, how to press on, uh, we, 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 we might need to lend an ear to what he's saying. Praise the name of God. Now what he said to us, he said, listen, I don't, I don't count myself to have apprehended it all. Praise the name. In other words, I have not made it. I'm, I'm not perfect. I, I don't have everything together. All my eyes are not dotted and my teeth are not crossed. Huh? But, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to forget those things that are behind me. Huh? Praise the name of God. I'm not going to let those things huh, get me down. Huh? You know, the devil has a way of coming back to remind you of all your mess ups. Huh? Oh, you, you heard me. I say mess ups. Huh? The, the devil has a way to come and remind you huh, that, that you are jacked up. Huh? Oh, y'all know jack up, right? Huh? Praise the name of God. And the devil has a way of trying to put a mirror in your face. Huh? Uh, as a matter of fact, the devil has a way of turning into a real view mirror. Huh? And all you do is look behind you and not in front of you. Huh? Well, some people don't want to look in front of them now because they're afraid of what the future looks like. Huh? Because now you can't control what it looks like. Huh? All the time before, we thought that we had all our stuff in order. Huh? If I just work a job huh, and I stay on a job long enough huh, and I retire and I save enough money, huh, I'll be all right. Huh? And I'll have something for my kids and my grandkids huh? and I'll leave a legacy. Well, I came out of town. Huh? Some things are changing so quickly huh, that whatever you thought you had in order could be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. It will take the energy from out of you. Some of you are frustrated because now you don't know. And it's amazing because all the time that some of us had to where we 
could have served God and we could have praised God and we could have come to church. Pray the name of God. Uh, church was not on our mind. And now that we can't come to the four walls, I'm hearing more people talk about getting to church that never went to church before. <laughs> Praise the name of God. Oh, when the church opened back up, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I mean, people got attitude that the church not open. You wasn't coming anyway. <laughs> now you're ready. Praise the name of God. And then you have the believers that, 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 that really love God. And you're wondering, what, what is this God? Oh, I pray. I had. I tired. I give, I love, and, and it seems like, like, like we're being attacked as believers. Uh, well, I just came by to tell you, if you didn't get it out of the story, uh, Paul was a believer, and yet he was being attacked. So that means that even though we have the Spirit of God, it does not mean that we exempt from the troubles of this world. Uh, what, what, what we exempt from with the Spirit of God is allowing our mind to be troubled like the world. Huh. Uh, now, the Bible tells us that we ought to think on certain things. Huh. And, and it tells us how we ought to think. Huh. And, and so, if you're going to talk and think like the world, huh, you might as well be a part of the world. Huh. But God tells me huh, that, that he is still the sustainer. Huh. He is still all powerful. Huh. Praise the name of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares that it will come a time and that it would have come a time, which that time is now, that people will be looking to and fro. Their ears will be itching. And we're looking from a word and a word that satisfies us. But it's not necessarily the word of God. The word of God is life in the word of God. Hallelujah. There's power in the word of God. And so there's resurrection in the word of God. There's salvation in the word of God. And I need to understand that is what we still need. We need a savior. And if you're looking to anybody else to save you, you're looking the wrong place. That's why Paul was able to say, I press toward the mark of the pride of the high calling because I realize that my Savior is the high calling. I realize that my salvation is still in Jesus. As a matter of fact, if the Romans think they got me bound, I'm not bound because of natural change, but I call myself a prisoner of Christ. Oh, praise the name of God. Somebody ought to praise him on that. Jesus said, I arrest you. Oh, yes, I have. With my power and with my spirit, you become a prisoner of me. Oh, praise the name of God. I bound you with love. I bound you with joy. I bound you with peace. Oh, praise the name of God. You just got to receive it and walk there in it. And even though I'm heading, this is what Paul said, even though I'm heading for Nero's chopping block, oh yeah, they're going to cut my head off. Oh, praise the name of God. The jury didn't come in good. The verdict didn't come in good. Oh, they didn't find me not guilty. They found me guilty. They're saying I'm guilty of being a lover of God. They said I'm guilty of being a believer of Christ. They saying I'm guilty of telling you that Christ can do all things but fail. Oh, the verdict didn't come in good and they're going to cut my head off. But I need you to understand that hallelujah some of them are trying to break up my past. Paul, aren't you that Saul that persecuted the church? Well, it's good for you. Well, I came by to tell you, you might talk about me as much as you please, but the more you talk, you better start bending your knees because I'm sure enough going to bend mine. Hallelujah. And I found out, praise the name of God, there was one time 
Hallelujah. The great commentary of uh, uh, L.B. Myers said that he thought, uh, hallelujah, that our faith uh, and that gifts uh, of God was given, uh, was put on shelves. Uh, and hallelujah, the taller you got, uh, the greater gift you got. Uh, hallelujah, as you mature in Christ, uh, you were able to get older or uh, tall enough uh, to reach that shelf, uh, to be able to get that gift. Uh, but hallelujah, uh, as he began to keep on living, uh, he wrote, uh, and he found out uh, that it's not the taller you get, uh, but it's the lower you stoop. Uh, that you find the gifts uh, because I found out like Paul found out uh, hallelujah uh, we can exalt ourselves uh, hallelujah uh, and God will bring us a base uh, oh Lord uh, what if we uh, humble ourselves uh, God will exalt us uh, hallelujah uh, and Paul realized uh, that the exaltation that he was about to receive uh, had nothing to do with this earthly realm uh, if I go, if I press on, if I go, if I press on, I'm going to see the high calling. I'm going to a place, hallelujah, not me by hand. I'm going to a place better than i ever been before. As a matter of fact, to die is gain. Oh, yes, it is. I'm about to become a tabernacle not made by hand. Hallelujah. Well, Paul, how are you able to press on in a situation like this? Well, the same way we need to press on in a situation like we're in. Everybody's talking. Fear. Everybody's talking negative, but you better press on as a believer. And Paul told you how to press on. How can I press on? Well, the only way you can press on is you got to put on the whole armor of the Lord. You got to charge your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Girl, up your loins with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness and get the shield of faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it, but I hope I know God. Hallelujah is a prayer answer. I know God is a hope answer. I know God is the substance that I tap into. And God has done everything except fail me. Well, I look back over my life and I think things over. God's done it all. God's done it all. He's called us to press on. That was a long time ago. Churches could have gave up. Churches could have quit. But God helped us press on. There were times in your life you would have thrown in the towel. But God helped us press on. You got to gird up the loins. Breastplate of righteousness. Shield of faith. But the helmet of salvation is what you need. For that is going to cover your mind. It's going to keep your mind stead on Jesus. And then you need the sword, which is the word of God. Now that's the good thing about it. You get the sword that you might fight. But then you don't have to fight. For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. That's what Paul understood. He understood the fact that, yeah, you might bound me naturally. Hallelujah. You might take my physical life. But I found out one thing that you can't do. You can't take my soul. Hallelujah. And I think sometimes we need to be and figure that out. Hallelujah. Like I told you, I hung around many patriarchs in the Bible. And there was a time I hung around Job. And Job lost everything. Hallelujah. And Job didn't know what we know. That God allowed the enemy to come upon him. But when you find out that the enemy is coming upon you, hallelujah, but the enemy got set boundaries. I'm going to say that again. The enemy got set boundaries. There's only so much that God will allow the enemy to do. And when you figure that out, you can sometimes go to the enemy 
look him in his face and said, whatever you got, whatever you come with, I got a God. Hallelujah. Even if you cut me down, hallelujah, you better pull my root up. Because if you don't pull my root up, I'm rooted and grounded, steadfast abounding, always moving in God. Hallelujah. Kill me and I'll live again. Because I'm pressing on and I got to press on because God infused me on the inside. Hallelujah. I got to go even when I don't want to go. God said, you got to go. You got to go. Why? Because I got something for you to do. I got something for you to say. I got places for you to go. I got people for you to touch. Praise the name of God. So don't give me that pity party. Don't tell me how bad you feel. Don't tell me what you done lost. Because whatever you lost, I can double it for your trouble. Oh, praise the name of God. That's the end of the story. Because then the Bible tells me, hallelujah, that Job received everything. Hallelujah, that he lost. And I'm believing that Paul received everything that he lost. And I'm believing that whatever is in our life, the thing that we think that we're up against now, hallelujah, don't give up. Don't quit. Press on. Press on. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Praise the name of God. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Praise the name of God. Listen, give him a praise. Praise the name of God. Listen, Sunday after Sunday, we come and we preach God's word. Praise the name of God. And we take for granted that everyone that's hearing this message, that you believe us, that you have accepted Christ. Maybe your press on this morning is to accept him, because maybe you never accepted him. So the message that was preached doesn't mean anything to you. But if you receive him as your seed, he will help you press on. The times that you want to give up, God will help you press on. But you have to receive him. He stands with his arms open wide. And he said, come to me. Right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, if you have not received him as your savior, do it now, do it this morning. And maybe you're one that that, that you accepted him, but you've gone astray. This is your time. Say, God, I hear you. I hear you calling me. And I'm going to press on. I need to get up from where I'm at and press on. I need to get out of this mindset and press on. Whatever it is that so easily beset me, I need to press on. Hallelujah. Whatever it is. Hatred, jealousy, addictions, whatever sin, allow me to press my way to you. And he'll receive you. And all you have to do is just pray this prayer. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are our Savior. I believe that you died for us. That we might have a life and have it more abundant. I receive you this morning. I receive you now. Do that. Do that now. Do that now. And where you think you was going to throw in the towel, God is going to raise you up. He's going to raise you up. And he's going to allow you to press on. Go to higher heights and deeper depths. There's greatness in you. 
there's a greater potential in you that you have not tapped into yet. And God said, press on, press on, press on.